Welcome to Church on the Rock Online. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. We made it. We're so glad that you guys have joined us today online and uh, it's going to be a great service because today is a great day. You ask why? It's because today is the day that the Lord has made, as the word of God says. Today is the Lord's day. It is the day for church. And so uh, we're so glad that you were able to join us today. Uh, feel free, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, as you are watching this service, to go ahead and click that share button. Uh, we would love for those who are watching to be able to watch with you as well. So uh, guys, it is gonna be a great day. I'm so excited about the message today. And we have a few other things going on as well. But, um, but first, uh, I just wanted to let you know, our senior pastor is not here today. Everybody say, oh. Yeah, it is. We love, we love Pastor Ron. But good news is that he is able, uh, he is uh, in the Longview area. His niece, Shelby, is getting baptized. And so isn't that awesome? And so uh, him, along with uh, her mom, Tina, and some others are out of town uh, being able to support uh, Shelby as she is getting baptized. Those are things that you can't get back, right? And so uh, Pastor Ron misses everybody. He sends his love, uh, but uh, he is there and we are happy for him. So Pastor Ron, shout out to you. I love you. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, I love you. I know you know that. Uh, Tina, what's up? What's good? Shelby, we're, uh, we're excited for you. So we're praying for you. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm, I think you're watching. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, we have uh, some other things that are coming up, but uh, I just want to tell you, uh, you know, today is, a, also another, today is also a special day. D today is the Day of Atonement, and uh, it's also called Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. And I will talk about that more in our message today, but it's a special day, and it is the day that, that, uh, that we uh, commemorate and remember what Jesus did on the cross before atoning for our sins. And so it's on a Jewish calendar, um, and I believe it's the 10th day uh, of the Jewish calendar. So it's a very special day. We'll talk about that some more. But here coming up, we have somebody here sharing our testimony. Haven't you guys enjoyed the testimonies that we've been receiving over the last few weeks? It's been awesome. There's something about a testimony, you know, the word of God tells us that we overcome by the word of the lamb and uh, I'm sorry, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. There's something powerful about a testimony, uh, being able to tell and share how Jesus helped us overcome. Amen. So uh, today we have one of our own uh, who has been here for many years. I'm sure uh, Royce Taylor is here today sharing his testimony. I'm so excited about that. So um, yeah. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and pass it over to Pastor Ken because he has uh, Royce with him today. So uh, Pastor Ken, what you got today, man? Well, it's so exciting to have Royce Taylor with us. Uh, we've known each other for many years and he's known a lot of you for many years. And uh, Royce, I know you've, you have an amazing testimony and uh, I, w I want you to share a little bit about how you came to our church, how you got born again and what your life was like before that and after. And then we're gonna talk about some of the secrets to your life. Okay, well it was, it was a lot, seems like it didn't even, it's been so long ago, it's almost like it didn't even exist, but I used to be an alcoholic drug addict and I drank a case of beer every day and anything no. else that I could get no. to go with it. Oh yeah, that was back in the early 80s and 90s. And uh, I grew up smoking weed. The first time I smoked pot, actually I was in the third grade. That's how early it was that I was, this stuff was, you know, introduced to me. And by the time I, I was a senior, know that. yeah, That's by the time I was a senior in high school, I was the biggest alcoholic drug addict on the campus. And uh, so it, it was, it was just right there. It was so easy to get my mom and dad were bootleggers actually up in East Texas. And uh, so, I mean, there's so much to, it's, it's hard to put it all in just a few minutes. But, wow. But I'd get drunk every day. I'd get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm a roofing contractor, and we would uh, we'd smoke weed all the way to work and then drink uh, beer, alcohol, whatever else we'd get our hands on the rest of the day till we pass out, and then we'd get back up, and we'd do it all over again. And that happened all the way up until uh, October the 16th, 1993 was the last day I got drunk. Wow, you remember that. That, that means you had a powerful experience. Yes. I was, went out that night getting drunk, and... Uh, I'd been invited by 
uh, Mr. Hall's son, Rex Hall, had invited me to church. I've been knowing him my whole life. Mr. Hall just passed away a little yeah, while back. That's great, man. And I've been knowing him my whole life, and they uh, he invited me to church. And with my religious background, you know, I thought I was going to heaven anyway. I didn't know how bad I was. And uh, so uh, back in back in the day, you know, you go to church and you give them, you go to church on Easter and Christmas, and you put five bucks in the offering plate, and you thought you did something. You're a holiday Christian. Yeah, and uh, and then go out and curse the whole world the rest of the week, the rest for six months. But anyway, what happened was is I got invited to church, Church on the Rock, when we was down the road down there. And uh, I got up that, that morning, and Rex Holly called me, and he said, don't let that devil keep you from coming to church. And I'm like, this guy's weird. What's up with this, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I, I got up. I went to church that morning. And I walked in the church, and everybody was praising the Lord, and I just felt very strange, you know? And uh, whenever they began to take communion, they brought me in the back. Him and Kenneth... Uh, Kathy Hall's husband, Kenneth. Mm -hmm. Kenneth and uh, Rex Hall brought me in the back back here, and they started asking me all these questions and brought me down, you know, pray with me down the, the road of salvation, the Romans road of salvation. I accepted Jesus Christ that day and delivered me from drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, cussing, poverty, bam, whole new life when I walked <laughs> out of that Glory to day. God. Glory to God. That's been a long time ago, yeah. you know. Well, you know, one of the things I also know about you, beside your storied past, is the fact that that you love to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you have, no matter where you've worked and, and who you've worked with, and sometimes you've hired some pretty difficult guys, uh -huh. let's say that, who yeah. are living the same lifestyle that you've been in. Yeah. But you do it on purpose, don't yeah, you? Yeah, a lot. I mean, in my circle, though, I don't do drugs or any of that stuff. A lot of people that come to work for me or, you know, they got alcohol problems, drug problems. And, you know, God gave me a million chances. And so that's why I still give them chances. Even if they mess up, I, you know, I get on them, whatever, but I still give them another chance. Yeah. And and you also have a have, have a great ministry like in terms of witnessing and bringing people to Christ and and just challenging them to do something with their lives. You've done it in prisons uh, in our local area and everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people work work for me right now. I challenge them every day, you know. They, you know, you're going to, what are you going to do with your money on payday, you know? And I'm not going to go into what I tell them all, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, they got to realize that you, like Pastor Ron always said, is the only problem with the dollars it spends one time. And you get to choose what you're going to do when you get paid on Friday. Are you going to go over here or are you going to go over here? You get to choose what you're going to do with your money and your life, you know, and, and just trying to, you know, tell them there is something better than what they're doing. Well, and you mentioned when you were led to the Lord that they talked to you about what is commonly known as the Roman road to salvation. Uh -huh. So is that one of the methods that you use to witness to people? Uh, well, I don't know. It all just depends on who it is, where we're at, and what's going on. You know, what if you don't know how to uh, bring someone to the Lord, what I've always did is try to give them uh, something to think about uh, that will doubt what they believe is really real. So that, you know, you got to put doubt in their mind where what they think is not really the, the truth. Because, you know, like Ron always said was, how do you know you're deceived when you're deceived? Well, you don't. That's why you're deceived. So how do you know your whole life you haven't been raised up in a certain way and uh, you don't know anything different? So here's something that's different for you. That's great. And so it makes them doubt, and then you kind of capitalize on those moments uh -huh. by challenging them. What do you say? What else do you say to them? What's oh, some it's, of it's, your secrets? Well, it, I don't know if it's really a secret. The Holy Spirit will just guide you, you know, and you just got to have faith that, you you know, the, the Lord's going to give you the words that you need when it's time to witness to somebody. Like the one time I told you before where I was went to a store and, and I walked up to the counter and the people said, hey, you can buy one of these bottles of water, you get one free. Well, I'm like, I didn't need it, but I went back and got it. And when I walked up to the counter, there was a guy in front of me and he was buying a pack of cigarettes and he throwed his money up there and said, I don't even know why I'm buying these. And I said, well, I know somebody that can deliver you from them. Wow. Just something like that. God ordained the time so that when I was in front of that guy that he knew I would say whatever. And then I ended up, shoot, he ended up coming to church, getting saved, going to third day concerts with us wow. and stuff. Wow. Yeah. 
<laughs> he was actually he was actually shooting heroin with his girlfriend. I had no idea, oh. but he started. They start confessing all these things to me, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and it, it's crazy how it works out. It's like the scripture says: you're making the most of every opportunity. Yeah. To tell people about the Lord. No matter how bad they are, Jesus still loves them. Amen. You know? Well, I would like you to just in closing, I just want you to. Uh, say a word of encouragement and just encourage folks to witness, yes. right? And to be bold in their faith. I think that's what people need right now. Go ahead and... Yeah. Well, no matter where you're at in your life or who's in your life, uh, you know, there's probably some people in your family that might be struggling with drugs and alcohol and doing things that they shouldn't do. But Jesus died for everybody. He he died. He loves them in spite of what they're doing. And we, you know, we all, even though we are Christians, sometimes we ain't the best witnesses, but what we have to do is we just got to reach out to them and tell them that there is a great deliverer and he is, you know, he'll, he'll give them everything they need. We think drugs and alcohol is what it is and that's, it, it's just that void in our life. And we can give them Jesus just by witnessing to them and just be, being their friend. And eventually they'll come around because people over the years have come to, uh, even came to this church just because of knucklehead me. You know, I ain't nobody. I'm just, I just love the Lord and, and I'm far from perfect, but just because God delivered me and set me free and I stand firm that just like, like I got a brother that's struggling with some stuff and I just refuse to go back to the old way because I want him to know that this is real if you'll just hang on to it. And that's what we have to do. Even if you're struggling with alcohol, drugs, Jesus wants to set you free from all these things and he wants to bless you. Amen. Amen. Great stuff. Amen. Pastor Marcus. Wow. Man, Royce, that was awesome. Now, uh, uh, Royce, man, I've known you for the eight years I've been here, and, uh, you know, me and you are just so much alike, you know, uh, you know, uh, in so many different ways. Uh, but uh, tell me, in my time of knowing you, man, uh, I, I know that you've been here for many years. And so uh, how long have you been going to church here, man? Since October the 16th, October the 17th, 1993. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Hanging in there. No matter wow. what you're going through, you got to go somewhere where you can get, you know, get the word, and that's what's going to keep you strong and keep helping build your faith up by, you know, from the word, and that's, that's what it's going to take you to stay on the right path. Instead of going to the dope house, I tell them guys when I go to the prisons, on Saturday night, you don't go out and party. You have to know that tomorrow's morning's church, Amen. so you just don't go do anything that's going to keep you from going to church because the devil's a liar, and he's got all these tricks he's going to try to play on you to keep you from going. So church is number one, and you got to be ready, getting ready for it on Saturday night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Man, Royce, we love you so much. And also your wife, Miss Kim, I believe she is here somewhere. Uh, I don't know if she is or not, but either way, we love Miss Kim. She, he, uh, he has an amazing wife, uh, Miss Kim Taylor. She is awesome. She's amazing. We've done some ministry together, but I love both of you guys. We appreciate y'all. One more time, let's give it up for these guys. Amen. I love testimonies. Awesome. Well, we are about to dive into the word. Are you guys ready for the word today? Amen. Come on, let's go. Well, listen, uh, today uh, we are going to be in Matthew chapter 27 today. And uh, we're going to be starting in verse 15. But uh, we will get there later in uh, the message uh, but the title of, ten, uh, of, of today's message is I am Barabbas. I am Barabbas. I'm excited about this message. Um, and as I said before, uh, today is Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. And I've been doing a little study this week on Yom Kippur because I knew early this week that I'd be preaching. And so um, uh, I began to kind of do a little study on it, a word study. And so um, uh, I thought it was really cool. So the word Yom, so we're going to break this word up. The word Yom means the day. Yom means the day. Kippur means to atone. And to atone, uh, I believe Kippur is a noun and the verb it means to cover. And so the day, when you put the two words together, Yom Kippur stands for the day of atonement, the day of atonement. And as we know, it's Jesus's blood that is used to cover 
our sins. So uh, Yom Kippur, it's a very special day. And let me explain to you what Yom Kippur is. So uh, the Day of Atonement, uh, basically what it is, it's the one day in the entire year where the high priest, okay, so you had multiple priests who were in the tabernacle who had certain jobs and they would perform different types of sacrifices for different types of things. And they had all these different things, but there was only one high priest. And, uh, and there would be one day, which is the Day of Atonement, where the high priest would make a sacrifice on behalf of the sins of all of Israel. And uh, it, was, it was a very rigorous and a very specific routine that the high priest had to follow. Um, you know, and, and, you know, from putting on certain robes to washing hands, to, uh, to different types of sacrifices. And so uh, I wanted to share a little bit with you, uh, you, know, you know, and we're gonna only focus on one part, but the one thing that I love about what God did is that this was so specific that the high priest had to follow everything that is written down in the law. They had to perform exactly to the T the way that he asked them to. And it was because whenever they would go into the Holy of Holies, you know, you, you went from the outer court into the, into the holy place to the Holy of Holies. I'm, I'm sorry, the inner court. Uh, and then the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is where God's presence was. And if, if they didn't do as, as, as God commanded or if they were considered unworthy going in, the Bible says that they would drop dead right there in the holy place. Talk about some pressure. <laughs> Talk about some pressure. And so uh, these guys, they, 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 they had to be on their game. But the reason why I love it so much is because this clearly was important to God. This was very important to him that it had to be followed exactly the way that he expected it or, 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 or the way that he asked because it was painting a picture and it was, it, it, it was shadowing something that was going to happen. It was shadowing Jesus and it had to happen exactly the way that he expected. So, um, so we're gonna, uh, I wanna uh, uh, focus in on this, uh, on this routine that they had to perform. And uh, you can read this, um, it's in Leviticus 16. You can go in and read it um, if you'd like, but for the sake of the message, I'm only gonna focus on, uh, on, on one aspect, which is, I believe, is the main the main, um, the main course, the main idea of this routine for, uh, for the Day of Atonement, which are two goats, okay? So the, uh, the high priest would have to do specific things. There were specific uh, things that he had to do leading up, but eventually there were two goats who, that were brought before the high priest, okay? And these two goats uh, would then, uh, the high priest would have to cast lots for these two goats. And one would become the Lord's goat and the other would become the scapegoat. The Lord's goat would be the one that would be sacrificed, okay? And so uh, after those lots were casted, he would then take a scarlet rope made of wool and he would place it around the, the Lord's goat, uh, the sacrificial goat's neck. And then he would take the, and then we would take another um, a scarlet rope and tie it around the, the horns of the scapegoat, okay? And then the high priest would then take the, the sacrificial goat and he would take it into the tabernacle and then he would then uh, kill the, uh, I'm sorry, he would then kill the Lord's goat and then he would catch its blood in a bowl, all right? Sounds fun. And uh, sounds like hunting almost actually. Um, but then what he would do is uh, he would then take that blood, and there were some things that happened before, or some, some things that happened after that, and they would take the blood of the sacrifice and, that was taken, and then he would take it into the Holy of Holies, where the presence of God was, and he was to sprinkle that blood seven times onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And then after that was done, he would have to do a few more things, and then eventually he would come back to the scapegoat, and he would take his blood-soaked hands and lay it onto the head of the scapegoat. And at that point, he would then confess the sins of the people of Israel onto that goat. And then, lastly, uh, a person who was designated would then take that scapegoat, take it into the wilderness, lead it into the wilderness, and then it would be released. And then, of course, there were some things that happened after that. But um, 
I, I find this really interesting. And again, you can go and read Leviticus 16 and you can read all of it. It's, 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 um, it's really cool. But when, you, when, when you're reading it, you just see a beautiful picture that's being painted that's pointing towards Jesus. I'm sure you guys, as, as I was reading that, you kind of begin to tie some, some, um, um, some commonalities to, uh, to Jesus. And so let me go through some of them. So Jesus... Uh, not only was he the sacrificial goat, but he also became the scapegoat. Those two goats, he became both of them in one. He was both the, sacri- uh, uh, the goat that was sacrificed and then also the goat who took on this, uh, 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 that took on our sins. And just as a scarlet rope was tied around both of the goats, a scarlet robe was, uh, I'm sorry, a scarlet rope was tied around both goats, a scarlet robe was placed on Jesus before he was crucified. Matthew 27, verse 28, it says that they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him. And this was before he would go to the cross. The the sacrificial goat was then taken into the tabernacle. And what was really cool, uh, again, this is something that we have been talking about uh, uh, this this, this entire past week uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday morning, Thursday evening. Uh, The tabernacle uh, uh, along with the tribes of Judah, the way it's shaped, it made the shape of a cross. And that sacrificial goat was then led into the tabernacle, which was in the shape of a cross where it would then be killed. Wow, isn't that cool? And then uh, after that, the blood of the goat, of course, was taken to the holy place and sprinkled onto the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And of course, the same way the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9 that Jesus is our ultimate high priest and that he also, he presented his own blood into the holy place of our Father in heaven, securing our redemption once and for all. That's Hebrews 9. Let me read that to you real fast. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11, it says, but when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that, that is not of this creation, he entered once and for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Wow, 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 wow. I love I love this so much. Jesus going into, he basically, he, he, this whole picture that you read in, in Leviticus 16, Jesus becomes all of it. And he fulfills all of it, ultimately approaching into the throne room of God and to a tabernacle that's not made of hands. And he then presents his blood, which ultimately once and for all secures our salvation in him. Amen? Amen. Come on. And I love that. And then also... Again, he became the scapegoat as well. In the same way the sins of Israel were confessed upon the scapegoat, Jesus, who was innocent, bore all of our sin, and it was so that, we, and so that our sins would be remembered no more. As you, know, as you remember, um, uh, the, uh, the scapegoat was led into the wilderness, and that was a picture of Jesus, or, or of God forgiving our sins and forgetting them, sending them as far as the east is to the west, and so that they would be remembered no more. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and so um, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says um, that uh, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Man, I love this scripture. Wow. Talk about the great exchange. The uh, theology talks about the great exchange. Jesus taking upon our sin, taking upon our transgressions and taking upon himself literally becoming sin and exchanging for us, we get his righteousness. And so that God, when he sees us, he doesn't see our sin, but he sees our righteousness. Amen. So now with that said, I would like to go back to the two goats. Okay. Let's go back to the two goats. So, uh, so again, you had two goats that were presented by the high priest and although there were two goats, there was only one offering. Again, we know that Jesus became both those goats, but there were two goats and only one offering. One goat was put to death while the other goat was set free, okay? Now we see this same situation, 
the same picture play out in the gospels. And we're gonna go there. Matthew chapter 27. We're gonna start in verse 15. And if you don't have your Bibles, uh, you, can, uh, you can follow along on the screen as well. So it says here, verse 15. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, anyone they wanted. Verse 16. This year there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. We'll go back to that name in a bit. As the crowds gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who was called the Messiah. Verse 18, he knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. And just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him this message, leave that innocent man alone. I have suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Verse 20, meanwhile, the leading priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. Verse 21, so the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? The crowd shot it back, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who was called the Messiah? They shouted, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Crucify him. Verse 24, Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. So again, uh, so Pontius, well, we go back again, there were two goats in Leviticus that were presented. And here in this situation, Pontius Pilate presents two men before the crowd. He asked for one to be set free and the other to be and the other would be put to death. One was Jesus the Messiah and the other was Barabbas. Now, when I was doing study and um, you know, I was following through, I thought I thought this was really cool. In er- in early manuscripts of Matthew, uh, Bar- Barabbas was named Jesus Barabbas, assuming that 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 that, 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 that was his first name. Um, it was pulled out eventually, but um, but it's interesting that Barabbas' name could have been Jesus. But I also find this really cool. And when I begin to study um, uh, the name Barabbas, this is really cool. Barabbas can be broken up into two words. Bar, meaning son, and Abba, meaning father. In other words, the name Barabbas means son of Abba or son of the father. So you have these two men that were presented, one whose name means son of the father and the other who literally is the son of the father in heaven. And they are presented here. And uh, in the Old Testament, again, there were two goats. And in Matthew 27, you have two men. One is Jesus, the Messiah, the truth, the innocent one, who clearly we know was, uh, uh, was, was not guilty of this sin, but he is standing there ready. And then on the other side, you have Barabbas. Now let's talk about Barabbas for a second. Barabbas, um, the Bible says that he was a notorious prisoner. That means that he was known for being in prison. He was in and out of prison. But in this instance, he was put on death row. Uh, he was put on death row. Uh, he was bound, he was locked up, and he was guilty of murder. And he was sentenced to death row, awaiting the day of his judgment. So it's really interesting. You have uh, in the crowd. You know, as I was doing some study, you had uh, you just had a crowd that were just there. And some you know some scholars believe that in that crowd might have been. Um, uh, supporters of Barabbas because Barabbas was a revolutionist. And so he was, you know, he was fighting against the Roman government. So there were people who imagined that, you know, hey, even though he's in prison, he's still a good guy. He's still awesome. You know, you know, let's, you know, you know, let's set him free, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, it's a picture of us you know, when we, that as, as men without Jesus, we justify our sin. But in this situation, Barabbas uh, is, is, is guilty of murder, and he is sitting on death row waiting his judgment. Both men were brought out before the crowd, and Pontius Pilate asks, 
which one they wanted to be set free. And of course we know they chose Barabbas. Jesus not only became the sacrificial goat, but he also became the scapegoat. And all of our sin, all of our guilt, all of our shame was placed upon Jesus as he carried them all the way to the cross and to his death. But Barabbas, he walked away free. So powerful. Now, let's just imagine being Barabbas. Let's just, I, I, you know, I tried to imagine what it was like to walk in his shoes in that moment. Knowing that he was guilty, he was locked up in prison, awaiting the judgment that he knew he deserved. He was guilty and he knew it and he knew that he was going to receive death. Any day now, they, he was going to be pulled out of his cell and most likely he would be crucified for his crimes. So he's sitting there and all of a sudden, boom, the cell opens. And I'm sure he's thinking at this moment, this is it. He's bound in chains and he's walking out. And as he's walking and he sees the light of day, as he's walking out of the cell and he sees a crowd that's yelling, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And I can imagine that he's probably thinking, this is for me. This is it. And so he's, he's bound in chains, imagining that this is the moment that he would carry his cross to his death. But then all of a sudden, the chains on his arms were unlocked. They were taken off and he's being told that he was free. Imagine what he's thinking at that moment, like what? And as he looks to the side, I imagine that he's looking to the side and he sees this man, this innocent man, a man who seems to be innocent, who is taking his penalty, his judgment, who's taking his lashes, his beating, and he takes up the cross that was meant for him and takes it and walks it up to Golgotha to his death. I think that Barabbas might be the only person who could say that Jesus literally carried the cross that was meant for him. In that moment, Barabbas was given the freedom that Jesus deserved. Yet Jesus bore his guilt, his shame, his disgrace, and the death that, um, that Barabbas deserved. Barabbas received the freedom in life that Jesus deserved. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? Amen. Wow. It's because I am Barabbas. You are Barabbas. And we are Barabbas. Without Jesus, we are guilty of sin. Locked up in a spiritual prison, bound in chains of sin. Helpless to get free. We were sentenced to death because of our sin. Romans 6 tells us that the wages of sin is death. We had no hope of redemption. We were lost, and yet all of a sudden, in an instant, someone came in, Jesus came in and took our place, took upon our sin, took upon our guilt and our shame, and he took it all the way to the cross and nailed it there so that we can be free and we can become the righteousness of God. Come on, somebody. Wow. All I can say is thank you, Jesus. All I can do is be thankful for the cross. You know, the cross is something that, that we as Christians know that it is, it, is the, it, is the, it is the first thing that we meet when we come to Jesus is, is, is we reckon with the cross, realizing that we die to ourselves and we, and, and we lay down our sin and we pick up the robes of righteousness. You see, Jesus at that time, he was the answer for Barabbas. Jesus was also the answer for his disciples. And you know what? Jesus is the answer for you. He's the answer for me. Jesus is the answer for all of us. And you know what? Jesus is the answer for today. I truly believe it. You know, in the midst of everything happening today, in the midst of everybody having a, a political opinion, everybody having their views and what they believe that we all should do and what things should happen. We all have our views, but at the end of the day, the only thing that truly matters and that will make a true difference is Jesus. 
So there's a few things as we look back at this message, after hearing this message, there's a few things I believe that, um, uh, 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 that it causes us to do. Number one is to remember the cross. For us to remember that Jesus took our, pen, um, our penalty and, he, and, and we walked away free. And to be thankful for the cross and to never let it and allow it to become common to us. Jesus died for us so that we could live for him. And the best way for us to remember the life of Jesus and him dying for us is, is to, uh, and, and for us to remember the cross is to live for him. That's number one. Number two is to pray for our nation. Today, um, uh, yesterday was the day, uh, a national day of prayer and repentance, uh, um, you know, in Washington, D.C., as Pastor Ken was saying. And today, Beaumont, today is, is, is a prayer for our nation, but also for our community here in Beaumont. Churches across uh, the community uh, here in Beaumont, Nederland, Port Natchez, we're all beginning to pray for Southeast Texas and praying for our nation. And I believe that God needs us today as, as believers to pray on behalf of our country because our nation needs us as believers to pray for God to intervene. Amen. Amen. And the last, and lastly, number three is to choose Jesus. You know, I often think about if we were in that crowd, if we were in that crowd and in the moment, the emotions that are, are, are rising up and, and the, just the pressure of the day was to choose Barabbas. You had the, the priests and the elders of that time pushing and persuading and trying to get everybody to choose Barabbas. And yet, really, in that moment, the right decision would have been to choose Jesus. And I believe that today is the same exact situation with everything happening around, there is pressure for us to, to, uh, 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 to, to make a stand and for us to stand on top and champion a political view, for us to champion our own opinions, for us to, think, for us to champion what, what, uh, what society and what, and what the loudest people in our nation wants us to choose. But I believe that right now the answer is Jesus. Thanks for joining us online. You know, I trust that you have a church home. And if you live in Southeast Texas, you have an opportunity to be a part of so many wonderful works of God. But perhaps you live in a place somewhere that maybe you can't get out right now and attend church. Maybe our church is the only opportunity or one of your chosen opportunities to hear the Word of God. Please join us on a consistent basis if that is a reality. And when your local church opens back up, I encourage you to become a faithful supporter of that work as well. Each Wednesday evening at seven o'clock and each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Texas time, I promise to have the Word of God ready for you, a fresh word from God that will make a difference in your life, your week. Connect with us. Go to cotr.com and you'll find a place there to send your prayer request. While we have this relationship online, I want to make sure that we make it as meaningful as possible. Even though there's no distance in the spirit, yet we have to work harder to stay connected. If you'll just fill out that connect card and leave your prayer request, I will make sure that we pray for you. You know, I know times are tough, but prayer will see us through. As well, you'll find a place to participate in stewardship. Every day we are reaching the world from Church on the Rock through drilling water wells, through feeding the hungry, you know, meeting the needs of those less fortunate in our community and communities like ours around the world. That takes resources. I want to thank you in advance for the resources you supply to do God's work. I believe with all of my heart that you can make a difference, especially in these difficult and stressful times that we are facing. Don't forget, however, if you have a local church to which you are committed, your tithes and your offerings belong there. Be a faithful supporter of God's work. And I promise you, things are going to get better. God has a way of making things better.
May God bless you. May God encourage you. May God strengthen your heart in Jesus' name. I'll see you next time right here at Church Online. This program is brought to you through the faithful support of the members and partners of Golden Triangle Church on the Rock. For more information about our church or to find other programming and additional resources, check out our website at www.cotr.com. Join us here next time. And until then, we pray God blesses you to make a living, make a life, and make a difference.